Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Karis Dillon and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In the last video we covered tick disorders. In this video we're going to start our video series about psychotic disorders by talking about and defining some of the key features of psychotic disorders. So let's begin. As we begin talking about psychotic disorders, there are some defining features or signs and symptoms of psychotic disorders that make them part of this category. Now these key features are hallucinations, delusions, disorganized thinking, speech, negative symptoms, and abnormal behavior movement, also called motor behavior. Now let's start by defining hallucinations. In order to talk about hallucinations, we first need to discuss sensations and perceptions. As human beings, we're constantly taking in sensory information through touch, taste, auditory, visual, pain receptors. It, our brain digests that information and helps us to perceive what's happening in the world around us. Our perceptions are the way that we interpret that sensory information. Hallucinations are perceptions that come about from a lack of sensory information. Generally, people that experience hallucinations tend to have auditory or visual hallucinations, but others can take place. The individual that perceives these hallucinations sees or hears or can touch them and can feel they feel very, very real to that individual. These hallucinations are usually very clear, very vivid to that person. With psychotic disorders, hallucinations tend to be voices that are different than the person's thoughts. If they are visual, they feel very real to that individual that is actually seeing them. Now, we do not consider hallucinations that take place right before falling asleep or just before waking up as indicative of a psychotic disorder. And if a hallucination takes place during a religious event, that's not considered part of a psychotic disorder either. So, that is the part about hallucinations. Now let's move on to delusions. Now there are quite a few different delusions, so let's first define delusion. A delusion is a thought process a person has that cannot be shifted or changed even with sufficient evidence that that thought process is not valid or true. So here's where we get into the different types of delusions. A grandiose delusion is when a person believes they have extraordinary abilities, have some extreme wealth unlike others, or they believe themselves to be famous even though it's clear that they are not. They may think they are Jesus, Buddha, or even God. A persecutory delusion is when a person believes that someone or a group of people are after them. They may believe this person or group of people is trying to hurt them in some way. They will not have any evidence that this is happening, though. The individual might believe the FBI or the CIA is after them, even though there is no real proof of this. An erotomanic delusion is when a person believes an individual is deeply in love with them when they are not. There is really no evidence that the person has feelings for them. A referential delusion happens when the individual believes that certain gestures or body language is meant toward them even though there's no evidence of that and it's just not meant for them. Nihilistic delusions are when a person consistently or constantly believes that a major catastrophe is about to happen. They may believe the sun is about to explode, nuclear war is about to happen, or a deadly disease is going to break out. And then somatic delusions. These happen when a person believes that something inside the body is not right or that certain organs just are not functioning correctly, even though they have no evidence of this. So these are the different types of delusions that tend to come about with psychotic disorders. The next feature that we're going to talk about is disorganized thinking or speech. So we can't read each other's minds, right, to know if somebody has disorganized thinking. So we really have to hear it through their speech. What we might hear with someone's speech is that they are switching from one topic to the next consistently or constantly, making it really hard for us to follow. 
Sometimes if these individuals are asked questions, they may answer with a sufficient answer or they can just answer and it makes no sense to us at all. The speech can be so discombobulated that it's nearly impossible to understand. So we call this word salad. You might hear that a lot with psychotic disorders or with schizophrenia. This can make it really difficult for someone with a psychotic disorder to communicate effectively. The next one we're going to talk about is grossly disorganized or abnormal motor behavior, including catatonia. Now, this may manifest itself in a variety of ways, including like childlike silliness or agitation that seems to come out of nowhere. It's very unpredictable. They could have problems performing daily activities or having like goal directed behavior. Catatonic behavior is marked there is a decrease in reactivity to the environment. So this means kind of a resistance to instruction from others, and this can be known as negativism. They may remain very rigid, um, sometimes having kind of inappropriate body posture or very bizarre body posture to a complete lack of verbal and motor responses, which is called mutism or, and or stupor. Individuals can also have excessive motor activity without obvious cause, or they may echo the last parts of a speech. They can have repeated stereotypical movements. They may stare, grimace, or even have mutism and or the echoing of speech. Catatonia is not just in psychotic disorders. You can find it in a host of other uh, mental illnesses and even with some physical illnesses. All right, lastly is negative symptoms. Now these are diminished emotional expressions or abolition. Abolition is a decrease in motivated, self-initiated, purposeful activities. So the individual may sit for long periods of time, show, real, uh, show very little interest in participating in work or social activities. They can have uh, diminished speech output, they can also have a decreased ability to enjoy pleasure, positive stimuli, and they may lack just an interest in social interactions. So that is the end of um, the key features of psychotic behavior. So essentially, these are the kind of big characteristics that make psychotic disorders what they are. The next couple of videos are going to be the actual disorders that come about in the category of psychotic disorders. Just like we did neurodevelopmental disorders and we went through each disorder, we're going to do the same thing with psychotic disorders. So we're going to go through each one. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Let me know if it was. I really do read the comments um, and I appreciate anything that you put in there. And I Really hope that you get something from the video and that um, it makes this whole topic easier for you to understand because that's my goal. All right. Have an amazing day and I will talk with you soon.